All right, physics students. I thought I might talk about something related to ro rotational motion that has to do with converting between types of speed. So imagine I've got, let's say, um, Einstein on the gravitron. Sometimes I call it the graviton. I stopped doing that actually, but in the past. So here's a side view of Einstein riding the gravitron. See, I can't remember which thing I said. Uh, and the speed, the linear speed V is coming out of the page. Um, here, wait. Let's see if we can make this look like a human being. There we go. We Look how excited that person is. So <clears throat> there is, uh, now that I've drawn all over it, we've got mg of the person being pulled down. You have normal force pushing in, and there's a frictional force pushing upward like that on Einstein. And if we go back to uh, an above view, I could do better than that, y'all. There we go. If we go back to an above view, and again, there's Einstein's center of mass. The speed V is this direction. Speed V is this direction. But there's also a rotational speed called omega, lowercase omega. Uh, and by the way, the radius of this uh, ride, I kind of messed up my R there, which I'm calling capital R. It's also over here, there's a capital R. It's the same exact R, obviously. Uh, the way to relate omega and V, in case you've never heard this before, is the rotational speed omega times the radius of the uh, circle or the curve you're going around equals the linear speed V. So omega R equals V. So the units here, let's, let's come back to omega. The units for radius is meter. The units for uh, speed is meter per second. The units for angular speed, omega, oh, and this is a lower case, omega. The units here are radians per second. Anytime we're measuring angles, we're only dealing, well, we sometimes use degrees to measure uh, angle. However, in the MKS units, the only... Um, angle measurement that's really allowed if you're going to allow all of the different equations to work and the different uh, units to work together. The only angle measure we're actually ever going to use is radian. So even though we might use degree or degrees to maybe draw a diagram, if you're doing a, a calculation, you're definitely going to need to do it in radians. We've done that before with projectile motion and uh, vectors. You have to convert to radians if you're going to use sine, cosine, and tangent, uh, either that or have degrees set up on your calculator, but radian is still the standard unit for degrees. So uh, the way we measure angular speed is how long it takes, like let's switch to orange. Let's say that Einstein went from there to there and that angle it swept out, let's call that delta theta. So uh, what we could do is say that omega is the change in angle, or wait, let's make that a zero. I usually make little knots, don't I, little zeros. Well, whatever. I'm going back to my original because it looked better. Final minus initial divided by the same deal. Final minus initial. So delta theta over delta t. So when you're measuring angular speed, what you're asking is how many degrees of arc did this thing move through in a certain amount of time? How far did it go divided by how long did it take? So omega is a measure of angle change divided by time change. And um, in this case, we're saying that it is a constant, right? Later on, we'll make uh, omega a function. But for now, 
here in this uh, chapter we're doing now, omega is a constant. So what we're asking here in this particular case is what uh, coefficient of friction mu uh, would you must you have if you have a constant speed v for a, a, a gravitron ride angle uh, swept out delta theta with radius r and delta t. Um, yeah, figure out what mu would be if you knew the um, change in angle over the change in time. All right, I think that's not bad. That, that'll help.